It's day one of Reading Festival 2015 and I'm here with Main Stages The Bronx. Yeah. How are you doing? Oh, we're doing great. How are you? Not too bad, thank you. Now, this awesome. was my first Mariachi El Bronx experience. What? How do you feel? It was so uplifting Good. and joyful an experience. You want to Good. Suit, don't you? Yeah, I, <laughs> I know. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, that's you know, that's one of the things that we get from it too. Uh, it's a, it's a very hopeful and positive style of music, and and you know, it's playing something like this, especially on the main stage for for us, is a huge honor. And we had a blast. You know, we're super pumped. So um, it was a really cool experience. Now, the first slot can be a tricky one because you've got a lot of hungover people. Were you surprised how like enthusiastic and willing they were to I kind was. of get involved? I was, yeah, because you know. Know, and I was super stoked how people I mean obviously we, we've done this before but it's like you never know what the start of festivals that people are gonna be super slow coming in yeah. or whatever but people were so pumped never and excited so people run in my life yeah you know they're running to get up front to just hang out all day and and you know it saw a bunch of people singing along which is always cool and just a bunch of people who had never seen our band before but who were you know having a fucking blast yeah. so it was a really really good time and and I'm super thankful for it when you wake up, do you think, okay, this is a mariachi day, I'm feeling that vibe more than the other, or, or are you generally like, I'm up for both, it's fine? I, I do, I do, and yeah, especially like as we like, you know, like we're starting to like write for new music and stuff, so there's definitely days where it might not be like a mariachi or Bronx day, or, or a Bronx day, but you wake up and you're kind of like, oh, like I feel like I want to write like this type of thing, or, or whatever, and it's nice to be able to go back and forth between the two. I mean, we love them both, so we can always get up for either one. But, you know, like, at a time like today, like starting a, a festival, I'd much I'd, I'd choose El Bronx every time over Bronx. Because yeah. Bronx is like rock and roll, it's like late night, it's dirty, it's drunk. Grimy. It's grimy, you know, it's not, it's not the type of thing to play at noon, <laughs> you know? So, we're, you know, something like that was, was perfect today. Nice and uplifting. Yeah. yeah. Now, talking about writing new material, when you've been working with, say, Carl on his guitars, on his new work, how does that transfer when you go back to working as a band? Do you find you've got new things coming in? or? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. We try to be creative all the time. Yeah. You know, like, to me, this is going to be a weird parallel, but I feel like it's like exercising, staying in shape creatively. It's something Matt and I talk about. And uh, not doing it for a couple weeks, I feel like I fall out of shape creatively. And it kind of takes me a while to get back on the treadmill, if you will. Gym rat. <laughs> he's a gym rat, that Joe B. Ford. Yeah, yeah. But he's, you know, it's, he's right. It's like we're trying to stay super busy and just, I mean, obviously we are with both bands, but writing wise, uh, you know, everything that we do at the end of the day, uh, you know, adds, adds in to what we write, to what we record. Um, we're very kind of, uh, uh, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, but we take everything we do in life, uh, whether it's our own personalities or our experiences together, travel, neighborhoods around us, friends, family, everything that we do finds its way into our music, you know? So we're always kind of open and receptive to what's happening around us. And whether it's, you know, taking inspiration from other friends that are doing music or people that you meet or something you see around you or on TV or whatever. So you always gotta keep your body and your mind open so that way, you know, when inspiration strikes, you see it, you know, and you don't. It's not something that just passes you by. It happens by osmosis anyway. Things get in there, don't they? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Now, I was read, uh, watching some older interviews and you very much commented on how you wanted to be like a question mark to people. You kind of wanted yes. to be unpredictable. Is that harder to do the longer you go because so many things are getting ticked off and being done? Well, that's... Uh, I don't think so. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that that's, you know, the greatest thing about rock and roll was that, you know. <laughs> and I think... I think it's changed a lot these days, you know, I can see what all my rock gods from the 80s had for breakfast on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> I think it ruins it. I like the mystery, to be honest. I, I grew up as yeah. uh, music was very mysterious, and it's not really like that anymore, but, you know, there's pros and cons to all of it. I think it's just about applying sort of, you know, a new take on things as much as you, as, as you can. Yeah, we try to keep uh, the music fresh, you know, with what we're doing, what we're writing, and you know, we're getting ready to go into, and start writing again for something else, and 
we're not even looking to figure out what it is. If it's Bronx or El Bronx, we're just going to write tunes and just kind of go with it. So in that way, you know, I think we always kind of, I think people expect us to do stuff different and to kind of come up with kind of out of the box ideas. And that's kind of what we thrive on anyways and the type of band and type of musicians we want to be. So we try to keep it fresh and mysterious that way. You know, people don't really know what we're going to do next. and. Although they may know what I ate for breakfast or what my dog looks like, they don't know what type of song we're going to write next. So, at least we got that. What if you wrote uh, breakfast themed songs? <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. Ranch <laughs> That's an idea, isn't it? So, do you think there are... <laughs> are there any... Do you don't like beans? No. You can't be a true Brit ever, then, if I, you don't like I baked beans. I will never be a true Brit. I do, I do, love, I do love the Brits, but... The English breakfast to me is an abomination. Oh, it's, blasphemy. I know, it's just it's disgusting. I don't know what you guys do with your tomatoes and your beans. But I just can't get into it. I can't get into it. I'm sorry. I can't. YouTube comments are gonna be full of hate about this section of the interview. <laughs> you can deal with that. Beans yeah. are just kinda of gross. Yeah. I'm like a bean queen. You're the telling me. The bean queen, the bean Dude, queen. That could be your hip hop. Yeah. The bean queen. <laughs> Let's coin that today. You better buy the website, beanqueen.com. I don't want to know what would be on that. Anyway, I'm going to bring it back to music yeah. swiftly. Now, talking about bands that are being unpredictable, are there any bands on the lineup here at Reading that you think, okay, they're a bit different, they're not, you know, sticking to the rules? Run the jewels. Yeah. That's, I think we're playing at the same time as them. Yeah, so we don't get to see them, unfortunately. Always the way. Yeah, yeah, but they're they're amazing. Um, you know, there's there's a bunch of uh, bands that are that are doing some rad stuff, you know. But uh, specifically today, I, I really want to try to see them. Um, but uh, you know, we'll see. Hopefully, we'll be able to catch like 10 minutes of it or something like that. Okay. Well, I'm gonna let you crack on with all your duties, so you can hopefully see some music. <laughs> You know, what if I'm going to go to catering right now and I'm yeah. going to eat lunch? What if it's just beans? Bring what me a bowl full. <laughs> a bat full. A bucket full. What if you The bean queen needs a bowl of beans. The bean queen. <laughs> That's awesome. going to be the headline of this interview. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very, you very much, much for talking to me. It. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you.